Matt Delatore writes in saying, I have never owned a comic, but I love the lore and have a basic understanding of the plethora of different characters and their storylines throughout the TV shows, movies, and wiki pages. Are there any comics that are must-have reads for someone interested in picking up comics for the first time? Interested in great story arcs, masterful art, unique books, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, X-Men. Also, are there comics for tablets? Well, the good news is, if you have an understanding of the mythologies from the various TV shows, movies, and Wikipedia articles that exist, uh, you're in a better place than most people. Bad news is that comics move much faster than TV, movies, and wiki can keep up with. For example, when the Captain America movie came out in 2011, Steve Rogers had not been Captain America for at least four years. In fact, between 2007 and 2011, Steve Rogers had died, come back to life, did black ops work for Obama, and then became Captain America again. No, seriously, he did black ops work for Obama. So I would say it's important to maybe read the back of the book or look online for a synopsis to see if this is a story that would appeal to you. Sticking with Captain America, for example, uh, if you only want to read Steve Rogers' Captain America stories and you pick up a book and the back says it stars Bucky Barnes' Captain America, you might want to hold off on getting that for a while until you read a Steve Rogers story that you really like. Next is the eternal question of how to get comic books. Do you get the single issues? Do you get the trade paperback? What's the difference? These are monthly single issues. Now, this is what everybody thinks of when they think of a comic book. You can get these at comic book stores or sometimes, if you're lucky, at a newsstand every once in a while. New issues regularly come out on Wednesday, and these are the ones that usually go pretty quickly. Now, in all honesty, I would recommend against going for monthly single issues if you're a beginner. They can often be very hard to find. You can usually only find them in a dedicated comic book store, and sadly, those are becoming much more rare in this day and age. Also, if you're reading a series that's very story-focused, it could become very easy to miss an issue or two. So let's say you start reading a series at issue 10, you get 11, 12, and you miss 13, you better hope there are extra copies of 13 at your store, otherwise you got a lot of hunting to do. Meanwhile, an easier route might be the trade paperbacks, which are usually single issues collected into one volume, generally around a similar theme or story. For example, these six issues of Batman Superman were eventually collected into one trade paperback, seen here. It's a trade hardcover, but you get the idea. And if someone wants to read the story, it'd be much easier for them to say track this down than it would be to track all six of these down. You get these at pretty much any major book retailer. Barnes & Noble has them, Amazon has them, usually for cheaper. Uh, even Target occasionally will have trade paperbacks. The whole trade paperback versus single issue argument is a lot like either watching a TV show as it airs or watching it on DVD or Netflix. When you watch it on DVD or Netflix, you have the benefit of watching the whole thing at one time. The only problem is you usually have to wait a long time for that to happen. Meanwhile, watching it as it airs, you get to be part of the conversation every week, but you may forget what happened the week before or the week before that. And again, comics come out monthly, but there have been times where books get delayed, and it can be a long time in between issues. So for new readers, I definitely recommend going the trade route. Just wait till everything's collected, get it all in one volume, real nice, real simple, and enjoy yourself. Now you asked about digital comics, and that might be even easier than getting trades. Both the Amazon Kindle store and the Apple iBook store offer comic books either as single issues or even collected like trades. Now me personally, when I read digital comics, I like to use Comixology. There's a Comixology app for just about every device under the sun and all your purchases sync. So if you buy it on your iPhone, it'll be on your computer and your Kindle and your whatever. They sell single issues, they sell trades, they sell digital exclusive, they sell complete runs, so if there's a particular writer you like, you can get like the whole Jeff Johns Green Lantern saga. Perhaps best of all, they're always doing great sales, like 99 cents an issue of a particular story. And they offer subscriptions. So if you want to read Batman every month and you don't feel like going to the store, just subscribe through Comixology and they'll send it to you. They pretty much have any comic you can think of. And if it's not there, it will be. They're constantly adding books every week. With the exception of Dark Horse published books, because for some reason Dark Horse wants you to use their stupid app, but don't. Just don't. Perhaps best of all, buying comics digitally means that all your comics are going to be stored in the cloud and in a device as thin as this. As opposed to getting them physically, where you keep them in white boxes, turning your room into something like this. It's six short boxes there, another two short boxes there, and another two there. These are all Phil, by the way. A long box filled with nothing but Batman comics. An entire bookshelf filled with graphic novels. And under my bed somewhere is another box 
filled with nothing but even more comics. So yeah, if you can go digital, go digital. Now, to answer your question about what to read, I'm just going to address the characters that you mentioned to make it easier on both our lives. Hands down, no questions asked, the best X-Men story is Astonishing X-Men by Joss Whedon and John Cassidy. Yes, Joss Whedon as in Buffy, Angel, Firefly, and the Avengers Joss Whedon. The very same. Now, they do contain references to older X-Men stories, but the references are never too confusing or too obscure, um, so new readers won't get lost easily. Now, the series came in four trades. Uh, Gifted, Volume 1. Dangerous, Volume 2. Torn, Volume 3. And Unstoppable, Volume 4. I know there's another version where they combine books one and two and books three and four into two volumes, so that might be another route to take. Either way, it's a story well worth reading because unlike a lot of comics, it has a definitive beginning, middle, and end. And while the ending is open-ended, it still ends the story. And that's something a lot of comics struggle with. Now, Spider-Man is interesting because for every good Spider-Man story there is, it's almost immediately followed by a really bad Spider-Man story. Whatever you do, don't read any Spider-Man story that has the word clone in the title. Just stay away. Some of the best Spider-Man stories to read are actually the original Ultimate Spider-Man stories by Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley. Ultimate Spider-Man is actually very similar to the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man movies. Peter Parker's still in high school, there's a lot of high school drama, um, and it's much more grounded in reality, whatever the f*** that means. What I like about this series the most is that Peter Parker is funny in it. And that's something a lot of writers forget. They get so hung up on the high school drama aspect of Spider-Man that they forget that deep down He's a wise ass. If you're interested in more of a traditional Spider-Man, like the Tobey Maguire movie Spider-Man, um, actually some of the best stuff are the earlier 60s and 70s work, like The Death of Gwen Stacy or Spider-Man No More. If you do want to give monthly books a try, they are relaunching The Amazing Spider-Man in April with a new number one. Um, it's a great jumping on point for new readers. Really, the only thing you need to know going in is that last year, Dr. Octopus's mind was put into Peter Parker's body and he paraded around as Spider-Man. Uh, but now, Peter Parker gained control of his body again, so... Yeah, I may have talked about it in one of my videos in the past. Now, regarding Superman, everybody's gonna tell you to read this. All-Star Superman by Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly. Now, while I agree that you should, there are other places I think you might want to start. For example, any Superman story written by Jeff Johns is 9 times out of 10 worth reading, and almost always immediately accessible to new readers. Probably the best example and the best starting off point is Up, Up, and Away, which he co-wrote with Kurt Busaic. It's essentially a soft reboot of Superman. There are going to be characters in it. You may not know a lot, but you know who they are. Um, and it answers the question, finally, of why Lois Lane stays with Superman. And why any other person you pair up with Superman just doesn't work. Now, when it comes to Batman, there's a little problem in that he actually has more trades than any other comic book character ever. What I'm going to do is recommend three, and these are going to be in the order you should read them. The Man Who Laughs by Ed Brubaker and Doug Mankey. The Long Halloween by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. And Hush by Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee. Again, everybody's going to tell you to read Dark Knight Returns, Year One, and The Killing Joke. And again, you should. But if you want something similar to what you saw in the recent Christopher Nolan movies, these two books are essentially the plot of The Dark Knight. And if you want a pure Batman adventure, something similar to the animated series, Hush is probably your best bet. Again, there may be references or a character here and there that you may not know, but the great thing about this book is that they explain all those references and characters right away in a way that never feels like an exposition dump. And if you want to talk about magnificent art, this is Jim Lee's best work, bar none. Now, I apologize if that seemed like it was a lot, but like I said, there's a lot to go over with this topic. There's a lot more I can go into, like how to follow continuity properly, um, proper collecting techniques, what the hell is an annual issue, things like that. And I probably will, but this is the best advice I can give for someone who wants to get started right away with a character they like. Hope you all found this helpful. If there's anything else you want to know about comic book reading and collecting, leave it in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. Cue the new animation. That's fancy. Like, share, subscribe. Um, class dismissed. Also, Scott Lobdell announced that Teen Titans will be ending with issue 30, but I'll be honest, that book sucks, and I haven't liked anything Scott Liddell has done in DC since the New 52, so I don't care. It's it's just long snoot, so okay. so whatever. You, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. Snout, snout. Actually, that's kind of really wrong, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. <laughs>